finals. Now, what do you think we can expect from this well, set? Oh, we're going Virgil versus Peach? Oh, this is lovely. Um, I mean... This is also best of five. Oh, we're in best of five already? I think so. When did you guys start doing that? Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> gosh. He is just going to start... He's going to start doing something. Okay, Mancho being relentless I, I, here. I, I don't know if he's making it back. Diablo! That was it. Oh, my. Zero to death on stream. Mancho showing why he is one of the favorites to win this Arcadian. He is just not. Okay, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh someone stop this man. I was not expecting this. All right, uh, all right seriously. He's like, taking 5% like, of he, time. He's just, he's just not Granted that first stock, okay, no, it wasn't the first stock that's convincing. I think that I would honestly expect Zyvon to switch after this. Give him a chance to switch. All right. He's shaking his head. He's actually giving a bit of a smile because nah. the difference between getting absolutely, like, you know, having, like, being too stocked and being too stocked in under a minute is you got to smile about it. You got to be like, okay, fine. You got me. Uh, nah. I think Zelda. My boy needs to do some fight out energy. Megas. Oh, he's, he's like, let me go Diddy. Like, he's going Zelda. Oh, oh, that's nice. okay. I don't know. We, you know, I don't know. We play Olimar here. Olimar does pretty well in this matchup, right? <laughs> I mean, the, one of the, one of the funny things. So it's one of those mechanics that we don't see in so much in competitive play. Is those uh, those Pikmin on their way back will bring items, uh, and that includes wait Kong's banana. What? Yeah. They push the items. They don't like pick them up. They just like push. Them. I think they have no. They just hands push them. With animations. Oh, maybe, but I mean, as far as like uh, animations aside, they are grounded. They, they stay. They grounded. are still grounded. And it's important that they stay grounded because if Olimar is not conscious of that, his Pikmin will bring the banana back to him, and he will slip on it if it's not his own. Oh, that's that is very interesting to know. All right, but now we have a completely different matchup. You know, Mancho going his secondary, and Zyvon going. Well, I don't know what order this Olimar is in, but uh, he, his Olimar being one of the one of the known matchups that Diddy actually loses, supposedly. Uh, I mean, but I mean, I can see why. Oh, oh, no, you're not oh. helper. You're not you gotta, helper. That doesn't you gotta work. Gotta be careful doing that when Olimar has a purple on board. It only works when helper does, because he'll get away. With it. We're good. We're good. We're good. He's we're coming good. back. Yep. Ah, uh, Zyvon had an idea on that air dodge. And button. yeah! All right. Oh, damn! <laughs> he was just, he just forward smashed him, like, out of the blue. All right, well, nice call from Zyvon. And actually, you know, like I said, uh, Diddy does struggle in this matchup because since Diddy kind of has the approach, he has, he has like a grounded approach with Olimar just constantly throwing pick one at him. It's so hard for him to... <laughs> Not only that, but like Olimar has ways to play around the banana. Yeah, no, for which, sure. Like a lot of characters just do not have. Oh, what happened? <laughs> oh, like this is honestly such an in-your-face way of playing Olimar, and it's working out for Zyphon pretty well. He's already done 77%, and yeah, it's it counting. I feel like Mancho is struggling to find a way to actually kill considering for sure. that I, you know, the thing is, I, also, banana. I also don't think that Mancho expected the Olimar pick because it's a... Uh, so Mancho won first, so he bans the stage and then he has to pick his character, right? No, it's he bans the stage, they pick the stage, and then he picks his character and then yeah, Adam is allowed to counter. And then he has to, yeah, he has to counter pick. Uh, so he definitely wasn't expecting the Olimar because he might lose the uh, the match for this, and, he, and it's looking like it's so much in Zyvon's favor. I know if Zyvon actually clutches the set out, he's gonna be super hyped with this. Oh, yeah. because after that 28%, like. Actually, I just want to add on to your point right there that that's probably a really good guess, just in the sense that if he took him to town, it was like, oh, I can probably kill Floaty off the top really early without throw up errors, did he? Yeah. But, the but then he, that, did, he didn't expect the Olimar. The thing is that now we have... And he went Diddy, so... Yeah, now we have tell. the counter picks being in the other camp. I feel like Zyvon might not lock down into Olimar. I don't he think... Confident. Yeah, he's not. Uh, no, I he's think Zelda. He's gonna Palutena, okay. <sighs> he's going to stay Diddy. Oh. I think that Palutena was a nice middle ground because Palutena shut down the uh, the villager. Like, outright shut down the villager. Like, Wait, really? Palutena versus Villager is hilarious. Bro, I'm never, I, I don't see that match. Like, <laughs> I mean, you've seen Sidebeat, right? When do I ever see that? You know, like. 
And the reason why, I just remember this, Zyvon actually, one of his big training partners back in Emerson is a Diddy Kong player. He has a lot of experience in this matchup. <gasps> oh, maybe Speaking of enough. which, Nacho, I mean, Mancho not caring about Palutena. All right. <laughs> oh, he's getting cheeky with it now. But, uh, you know, the, the thing is that I think that uh, Zyvon was expecting him to switch off the Diddy, which is why Zyvon switched off the Olimar. Because there was no reason to do so, you know? Well, Unless thing, it was that. The thing is, I think that he, you could tell that he was comfortable against Diddy to the point where I think he oh, just very. didn't want to have to worry about the, the villager. And although this matchup isn't going so great for him, it was going better than a villager match. Mm -hmm. Alright, nice platform cancel. Is that it? And no. One more though. That's, that's well, Mantra was already congratulating himself with a nice round of applause. And I think that might be well justified considering the fact that Zyvon... Okay, Mantra, you're getting, you're getting nasty now. You're getting nasty now. Oh, Ooh. I like the wait for the air dodge. Just slowly walked up and tried to give him the clap again. Oh, this could be big though. No. He DI'd properly. He did DI properly, but if, you know, this is, it's a long, <laughs> it's going to be a long battle for Zyvon, or it could be a very short one as he gets up tilted, and that's Moncho taking 2 1. Now, the thing is that. Oh, no, Mon this is not. Sorry, sorry, we're best 3 out of 5. Yeah, no, it's 2 1. You're but, right, you're right. but he didn't take it. Now, the thing is that Moncho has to either stay Diddy or uh, pick Villager. If he stays Diddy, Zyvon gets the counter pick with Olimar. Exactly. Yep. And so he did say Diddy, and now, I mean, if the match, you know, if history repeats itself, Zyvon's going to win this one, taking it to a game five, where uh, Mancho is going to have the counter pick, so he's going to have uh, Villager to break out for this Olimar, if anything. The thing is, though, that that last match was convincing enough that... Uh, he's just trying to go for it. Maybe Mancho has also figured out something about Zyvon's play style. And although that this matchup was super in uh, Olimar's favor uh -huh. last time, I could see it that if he's not careful, he might just end up dropping this game and the set count is just 3-1. No, I, I definitely agree. You know, uh, counter picks, me, counter picks are, are, are good to a certain extent. It is all about what you do in the matchup. And Mantra has proven that he, has, he adapts very, very quickly. Uh, you know, this entire tournament, he's been like showing one thing after the other. Not caring about the pick and going straight for the grab. Zyvon is in a bit of trouble now. Down oh. smashes him out. And now he has Banana and Pikmin available. That was such a beautiful uh, kick on the monkey flip. Did he? Yeah. Dickman? Uh, probably not, but like, I did not see that down smash going away. All right, Pikmin beating the Banana right here. Oh. Uh, he still gets hit by blue, and luckily that wasn't the purple. That would have hurt a lot more. Well, per admittedly, purple's range is not nearly as good. True. Oh, my gosh. That would have been it, too. Monster definitely would have died. Oh, that should be it. Nope, that's definitely it. All right, but the thing is that I feel like Zyvon's going to throw out a random smash attack, and it is going to connect because Olimar has a lot of, you know, he has a good amount of range, and he's not out of this by any means necessary. But all this extra damage, Monster's just going for it. All the extra damage that he's racking up right now. Oh, uh, not even doing the grab, doing the one that goes through. I like the idea behind those barrels, but Zyvon gets past it. But getting past it might not be enough. He's still forced to recover low. He's taking eighty-two percent, and Moncho is done. <laughs> Look at him smiling. He knows he was nasty. Granted, he has a big lead. Um. A lead is not a win, though. We've seen that so many times in Smash 4. Alright, trying to pivot grab Diddy's roll, but Diddy's roll being so good. Didn't get the invincibility for it. I, I don't know who's getting hit by the Pikmin. <laughs> Alright, nice job. We have a, pur a blue, a purple, and a white. See, that's what I was talking about with the bringing the banana to him. Yeah, he saw yeah, that. Yeah. He actually ended up slipping on it, and that's why he's off stage right now. Again, he gets slipped. That's dust in the game. No, not oh, yet. What? Not it. Not it yet. Oh no, the Pikmin are trying him. Look the at the up tilt, <laughs> Zyvon. I told you they carry it. I just want to point out that I told him that to carry it, and also that that was a stupid way to end it. <laughs> He's purple. He's trying to help out so much. <laughs> I need 
you to see it again. <laughs> Please, Devin. <laughs> I need this. <laughs> no. That's okay. I was gonna. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> Wolf, look into my eyes. I'm crying right now. I'm done. This man is gone. Okay, and we're getting right into it. Now, there are a lot of things that make this matchup difficult. You know, and it's, it's like, there are some of the, like, the more uh, esoteric things that make it tricky. For instance, if Meta Knight does mess up on the uppies, and if Mario falls out and he has Flood, he can push him. And sometimes you can just kill him at any percent, because especially on a stage like Smashville with not as much actual space on the island, sometimes, you know, if he just overextends a little bit, it could be the end for him. Oh, yeah, I thought he was going to do a suicide with the side B. Uh, nah, I don't think I said it. That's not good. Now. Eight or nine would do that in that situation. All right, but this this match is, you know, oh, wow. you know these two definitely showing why they're in winner's why they're in winner's semis right now because this is all uh, D just kind of just spacing uh spacing eight oh nine out. <laughs> Another back air. The way that Paul is mixing up his timing seems to be giving eight oh nine quite a bit of trouble. He's managed this out eighty seven percent, but. There's an old adage, when one of the percents are red, either could be dead. <laughs> and at this point, it's going to be oh, 809. Oh, my goodness. Paul's conversions have been so good today. He's, 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 he's powering he's, up. He's just dunking on people today. But uh, I think that we're going to see a switch um, from his Meta Knight. I mean, depends on if Paul D is able to close this out, you know? Especially in a best of five set, you have the liberty, as we saw, to do these counter picks. But uh, he's not going to just give up. Wow, oh, actually two frames in with that. Oh, no, no, I think he just re the ledge. Uh, he got chomped. Oh, he got chomped? All right, Paul, yeah, he's starting to slow it down. He's like, okay, I just want to get little bits of damage here. I want to make sure that you approach me. What a good dash attack by 809. You know the funny thing, even though everyone knows the dash attack is what he's looking for, he still manages to find it. Yeah, no, it's I mean, crazy the, how he does. A that. good Meta Knight, you know, knows exactly how to mix up his dash attacks because because that's one of his like you know like two, what, two approach options. Um, <laughs> he needs to understand that hey, like people know that I'm gonna do this, so I I can't have them expect it. Uh, but you know, Paulie, uh, Paul Paul D is at a, at, you know at a Good percent to die right now from back air from forward smash. Well, that's it. Oh, oh, what a beautiful nice back. drift. All right, and now Paul D managing to trade there, but nice. actually that trade working out poorly and as he still gets caught. Puts himself back in. Puts himself back in the game too. Did he just spot dodge that? <laughs> This is the sort of thing where you see that Paul is such a momentum-based player. But now that the match has been slowed down, he's going to do a lot of damage here. But if 809 takes this game, it's going to... Like, Paul is going to have to do a lot in order to have this Oh, save. oh, 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 ooh, ooh. All right, he's, he's, no he, he's no doing way. it to him. He's doing it to him. 809 with the beautiful combo gets the, uh, the jab lock. Sadly, Mario falls off the stage, gets a trump, continues from up air to up air to back here. Mancho, uh, oh, God damn it. Uh, <laughs> um, 809 taking game one. And that is thank you. quite <laughs> admirable considering that that matchup is difficult and he got absolutely crashed the first stock. But that's the sort of thing where it kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, when, um, when Mancho and Zomba were playing. And Zomba was like really aggressive, really like in his face at the beginning. But by the end, he started to be like, too patient. Yeah, because Whereas the thing is like, that Mancho, Mancho made him switch his playstyle. Yeah, no, he did. But like the thing is that I feel like Paul also did that. But like he's like, oh, I need to slow it down. But I feel like he felt like he needed to slow it down without knowing how to take advantage of that. I agree. You know, like when he was on top of 809 before, you saw he was like comboing and he was doing all this stuff. I mean, the stuff. thing is that you can... And then when he slowed down, all of a sudden he was getting hit by tons of dash attacks because 809's neutral is so good and so patient. Like, you're not going to outpatient this man. Just like that, you know, Paul, I feel like before when he was just in his face, he was actually getting more off of it. I 
That is like the 70 millionth trump that uh, it yeah, arrives to land. Right, nice pivot grab gets it. Oh, actually jumps out of the up combo. Oh, he's taking this match a bit slower now. Noticing, you know, he now knows what 809 is capable of. You know, we definitely, we definitely saw that. Oh, ooh. You know, we definitely saw that 809 is no slouch when it comes to turning things, turning the tides in his favor again. So now I feel like Palti is more aware of that, and he is slowing down the pace of this game. Uh, you know, right now, she's neutral. Oh, finally he gets that grab, and this is the possible big punish. But 809 basically managing to dodge every single one of those up airs. Oh, but now this could be a big chain. Some solid damage. Paul finally has the lead, but uh, I don't necessarily know because like. There's, I feel like a certain play style where, okay, that was actually perfect. I was about to question his ability to, you know, sort of, like, actually punish approaches. Oh, this is it. Oh, wow. He could have just forced it. <laughs> he could have down smashed yeah. No, but the US, I mean, the up smash would have, like, it might have, it might have killed, but, oh, this is a down throw to fair. Doesn't nice, get it. Nice air dodge from 809. And right now, Paul is in interesting position to say the least he gets grabbed and this could possibly be awful for him he does turn that bad situation around but he's caught in the corner no he does wait for that air dodge but actually 809 goes too far the spacing between these two are is immaculate right now as 809 tries to oh huh. he gets cake. that's cute oh if he gets it back though he's dead Oh, absolutely. Oh, and he but, wants that. That was, he was trying to empty hop into grab, I believe. But 809 knows this. He's starting to use those down tilts. What a power shield. shield. And that's uh, good. That, that's if, like. If he didn't do that, he was going to tomahawk grab. Well, that's the thing is that, like, Paul, like, he very consciously, like, took the tomahawk grab into 809's mind. But, oh, just oh! so deep. Oh. oh, the magnet hands coming alive to save 809 in this stock. Now we're back to a dead even game here. Paul is caught in the corner. He doesn't have the lead. It's only 7% though. He has to be so careful of a dash attack. And there it finally is. He doesn't need too much of a punish, but I don't know. Asado, uh, sorry, 809 has been so consistent with those. Mm -hmm. I mean, both of these players are playing neutral splendidly right now. Just, you know, feeling each other out, understanding. Oh. Oh, 809, please. <laughs> yeah, and the damage just keeps on coming. Paul stuck on ledge continuously, it seems. He's got only like two hits in and neither of them have led to anything big. I hope he uses that platform. Oh, nice, just goes for an aggressive uh, return to stage. And that's sometimes what you have to do because that's something they don't expect it. Not dead yet. Mario is, you know, mid-weight, so he is still fine. Especially since Meta Knight doesn't have any rage. But he needs to be careful because as he's hitting Meta Knight, Meta Knight's rage grows. And that's going to be a problem. I'm like, when is the next dash attack? There it was, but actually it still doesn't work out for Paul, even though he managed to avoid it. That trade putting him on the corner. He's been there progressively in oh, that Oh, like, gets the forward smash. Ooh. Wow. Paul D actually not dying from that. He gets Trump for like the 57 times. Again? Uh, no uh, uh, surviving. This man is, oh, we're halfway there. Oh, leave it on a prayer. Take my hand, make it a prayer. Oh. But that is exactly what Paul D is doing as well. Oh. I like the reverse. I'm trying to get a little cheeky on him. But, oh, gosh, don't roll into that death. All right. Oh, he's going to go for it. No, he's not going to kill. Uh, however, keep in mind, another good kill option is the upper to upper to, to, to down... Uh, down A for Mario. Uh, the little tornado thingy. Is that down A or down B? That's down A. That's down A. I'm not crazy. Down B yeah. slugs. Up smash? No, up, yeah, point, yeah. yeah, up smash is going to do something at this point. <laughs> but, oh, oh, forward smash. Just forward smashing him out of this place. I, I love that because that's an option we haven't seen yet. That might be like a solid answer. <gasps> down tilt to him. Gets it. Oh, this match is so close. Oh, Got to the second hit and gets the up smash. And Pauly D actually dies. He was living on a prayer for so long. But that's just it. But that song only it lasts only for like so three and a half minutes. <laughs> and eventually, Word. the playlist that, came to an end. Is it the set? No. 
as well. Okay. It's too well, but we're moving into game three. Devin. Devon. Devuni. <laughs> All right. So can Pauly D make... I keep on calling him Pauly D, but it's Paul D. No, I keep calling him Pauly D. Please. Can Pauly D make this adjustment? All right. Also, um, talk a little bit about what's been going on here. Noku actually beating Mega. So Noku beat Novato. Novo Noku beat Mega. Sketch beat Flood, and then Sketch beat DJP. Uh, Sketch and Noku are going to be playing for seventh, and then Pong is waiting in losers sem losers quarters for I believe the loser of this match. Wow, they are. You know, Sketch is turning up right now, man. What? Sketch is turning up right now, man. A lot of it. Like, if you look at how many NSM guys got deep in Bragan, it's actually kind of crazy. We have um, two NSM people in top eight, uh, another, an extra two in top 12. Uh, All right, but we are taking a guy to Smashville. Um, you know, I guess with the mat when the matches are this close, no need to change stages or anything. You know? All right. Oh, he's weary of the trumps now. Nice. Oh, Meta Knight actually dodging out of the, out of the, yeah. the dog tool combo. I want to point out that there were five uh, NSM players in top 16, but Paul is the only one left in winners, and he does not want to drop it, especially considering that he definitely understands a lot of what he wants to do in this matchup. It just happens to be that 809 is out thinking in those critical moments. He definitely is. Uh, this match, especially since you know, Meta Knights do say that sometimes it can be a bit more difficult. Oh, yeah, he's that. He's that. <laughs> This hurts you more than it, this hurts me more than it hurts you. <laughs> All right. All right. Getting back to this match, though. I think that so Paul is doing a lot more. I think he, yeah, you can see he's playing aerial base, trying to bait out that dash attack. He has it quite a few moments, but he hasn't been able to punish it even still. I like the dash attack. Um, I like the smash attack attempt because. He knew, he, he read the tech from Paul D. <gasps> oh, no, falls out of it. Falls out of the second hit. And these are the crucial moments that, you, like, these are, these are things that you can't do. You can't drop that killer combo. This could be big. Wow. Ah, you got an auto no cancel timing. On that one. I didn't even know there was an auto cancel on that move, right, but. Right. Since Brawl? Well, I mean, I thought they took it out. What did it mean? What did it mean? I had a Brawl like. Uh, I mean, you didn't have friends. <laughs> <laughs> Only other Meta Knights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was just the Meta Knight club. Like, no one else was allowed. He did get uh, Wario Grab released by Marth. That's so funny. All right, count. All he need. Okay, all right, just smacking him into next century. One, now, thing we oh! one thing we haven't seen from Paul at all is the up smash, and I, like, I know why. It's because of the way that 809 is playing grounded. <gasps> Oh, he got the fuck stop, but he came back anyway. Oh. This Zit. could be it. That's the up smash I was talking about. The turnaround about. up smash, too. Making sure that the big head, the big part of his head hits for these critical moments. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's just... <laughs> Paul has a lead. He had a lead earlier on in this set, much less decisive, uh, much more decisive one than this, and he wasn't able to close it out. But I think now he's learned how to. That you is wanna the. Just, uh... You want to keep on talking because that's what happens when you talk. Well, actually, I have to say that the Meta Knight run up up smash is actually like so good to have in the back pocket because of how much the opponent is conditioned into just jumping. You know, dash attack. If they have a jump that can get them out of dash attack and grab, it's like, great, what can he possibly do? <laughs> now, oh, Paul's doing a great job of escaping these ladder combos from, uh, from Meta Knight. And I feel like he's kind of he's kind of finding his uh, his groove in this match. Oh, I don't know if he has a jump. Okay, he does. Meta Knight, I guess Meta Knight grab uh, puts him on the ground. I don't know if he has a jump now, though. I love that early uppy. That was so smart. Nice. Try to just get the jab to the grab. Yeah, look at these perfect this, pivots. I know. Like perfect pivots. There's like... Oh! He read it. Again! That's so good from Paul. The way he's baiting out this dash attack. He's getting consistent damage, but... Now we're entering the phase no! of the match where... <gasps> Paul D, no! Por qué? Uh, 
You know, Paul does have a shot in losers, but I think that might be the end of his DJ career. Word. All right, guys. It's been a pleasure. It was Horde. Yeah. What? Yeah. I've only been paying attention to, like, the top half, like, Mancho and a Zyvon side. So when I saw he was in the top eight and he was like, hey, Ralph, you want to coach me? I was like, yeah, sure. And, yeah, honestly, he's still playing very well. Even though he got 3-0'd uh, by 809, like, he played amazing all three of those games. So I told him to compose himself, say, say like, level-headed and losers. So, here he is. And he actually has a good amount of Fox experience, doesn't he, from, like, one of the yes. NYU Foxes? Uh, one of the NYU Foxes, Ohai Simon or No Chillager. Um, yeah, what he goes by now. But, yeah. you know, he also has a Fox himself. But, like, Kong is definitely a level up. <laughs> His tag is free, Dre. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> they're going for it. Um, but uh, one thing about the way Paul played that last set against 809, yeah. at the end there, you, just got, you could tell that there was the adaptation of dealing with that attack. Yeah. It wasn't quite enough he, to close out the set, yeah. but it definitely tells me that he can deal with burst options. Yeah, exactly. Just I was telling him, like, he was like, oh, I'm not that comfortable in the Meta Knight matchup. Like, what should I be doing? I was like, Kent the corner, you know, if he if he whoops a dash attack in the corner, like, you can get a punish. He, he doesn't really have much room to cross over your shield. And you can also just whip punish if he d undershoots the dash attack, which he was doing really well. So I wouldn't be surprised if he does a good job whip punishing Fox and dash attack also. Oh, the impeccable yep. back air. Good stuff to Paul right there, evening up the stock count. He's taking a little bit of damage, but... Considering the fact he's playing against a fox, he can even that up pretty. Big. Yeah. Okay, up tilt on shield. That was actually really spa uh, nicely spaced, and Paul was like, his back was facing to him, so he couldn't get a punish. Wow, what a power shield. That up air is normally so hard to punish. Yeah. But if you power shield something, nothing's hard to punish. Yeah, that's a fox thing. It's just like, oh, I. I put you in the air, now I'm going to landing trap you. Oh wait, you're going to hit a button, so I'm power shield, and then up tilt. Okay, I'll smash the landing. Not going to kill just yet. And he got the back air. I don't know if he has a jump. He does, and he makes it back, but he's already in a pretty bad situation. 127% on his body. And Fox is definitely no stranger to having kill power. You see him fishing for these yeah. back airs. I wouldn't be surprised if he forward smashed. Oh, okay. Okay, the BMBs. Okay. Oh. Paul has him in a good position. Resets to neutral. Paul's gonna throw him off the stage. Either gonna look for a, yeah, yeah, there it is. I but I I kind of oh. felt like everyone saw that coming, and so Paul went for that jump as well. Nice a tag, clutch tag, yeah. Can't be a fox player if you don't know how to tag. At the same time, though, oh, up smash might do it, yeah. but the back air is binding its mark, and that means that Pong takes game yeah. Is this best 2 out of 3 or 3 out of 5? 3 out of 5. Oh. Everything in top 8 is 3 out of 5. Yo, let's go. So I think Paul right there, he got caught in his dash. He was definitely trying to dash in and then like at the end of his dash get a power shield and then up smash him, but he got caught in his dash and you can't shield in the beginning of it, so he got back here. Well, he could have up smash, right? Out of his dash. He, he, he could have he up smash, but I think he wanted to like power shield and then up smash. Uh, he was definitely trying to like run in shield, so... Do you know if in Smash 5, uh, Smash Ultimate, uh, I need to get used to it, Smash Ultimate, you can... Brawl 3. Brawl 3? I am totally about Brawl 3. Brawl no. 3. Snake is in it. We're calling Brawler it, Dodge is in it. We're calling Brawl it 3. Ultimate. No. I'm calling it Brawl 3. It's a I'm, good game. I play It's a good game. Dude. Anyway, yes, what was your question? I'm going to call it uh, Melee... Sorry, Smash... Smash? 68. No. No, 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 see, no, that, that, that goes against what that the game actually is. What do you mean? Brawl it's 3. Are you kidding me? Did you see the extra hit stun? That is the hit stun of friggin... Oh my god, guys, it's Brawl 3. Like, everyone, Dude, like... Did you see how far they get knocked and then they, like, stop really fast? It's, uh, yeah, it's simulating hitting a balloon, uh, where when you smack a balloon, it goes really fast and then it just stops. Yeah. Oh! I mean, actually, one thing that I, I, I thought about, like, because, like, when I first saw that, I was just like, that's really unintuitive and doesn't really make sense, but... If you think about it, uh, if you think about it in the in the sense of like when you get hit, it's like that's the distance you're gonna go before you can act. It's just like the same in any Smash game, but in that moment you just hit fast forward, and then it's back yeah. to normal. It's literally just that. Yeah. And I mean, I think is it also an indicator of hit stun. What do you mean? 
like when when, when you're, you're getting, getting hit fast, you're in hit stun, and when you're well, I mean, once the stun. smoke stops, you're not in hit stun anymore. Yeah. That's the whole point. But that's what I mean. That's like literally my point. Alright, whatever. Game yeah. two. So it's like lie, lie. <laughs> visual cue. I actually love that. That they're indicating hit stun now. Right. So it's like one of those things where they say like, you know what, never mind. That's great. Alright, do you know if in top, do you know if in uh, best out of five, you are no bans? There is bans. There's one ban. There's one ban? So I'm actually Can surprised you that, uh, I was surprised that he didn't ban Lilat. Why? Uh, well, because Fox. Fox yeah, that's a myth. Fox is pretty. Fox is pretty okay on Lilat, man. Uh, Fox is pretty okay on Lilat until he just teleports through the stage. The only and thing that's wonky is the the side B. Like sometimes when it tilts, the auto cancel window is bad. Well, not only that, but because of the. Oh, um, <laughs> what even? I'm sorry. I'm. I'm. I'm uh, did you finish that thought about how Lilat isn't uh, the worst it's thing ever not, for Fox? It's still not a bad stage. You have he just got untechabled from above the stage by Mario Dash. No, attack. I didn't. I didn't say like Lilat as a whole is not a bad stage. It's obviously an awful stage, but it's not a bad stage for Fox. I, well, another thing about the stage is actually that because of the tilting, it can mess with his auto cancels, and I that guess. does. And that yeah. does actually lead to a problem with frame trapping for the up air, which is like, that's frame perfect in order yeah, to get yeah. the auto cancel. So even a slight tilting might mean the difference between getting a frame trap and getting punched. Yeah, right, for sure. But I'd say it's it's still good. You can trap landings on the triplats. You can just shark under them. Because honestly, if you treat it like another triplat, you can just pressure like you do on Battlefield or Dreamland, and it'll be almost the same. So, okay. BNB. Some nice damage from Paul. Uh, interesting use of the flood right there. I think he was hoping to put him up on like, off stage. Ooh, uh, if he held it a little longer. But that was a good side view from Frame Paul. trapping. That's what I'm saying. These platforms. Okay. Just gonna respect Mario at the ledge. I agree with that. If he get if he missed time something and then Paul back throws him, like he could lose the game off that. Like that. Is he gone? He's not gone just yet. But that is. That I think he's forced to side B. He is going to snap to the ledge there, yeah. but now this game is essentially even. He just—he almost died. Everyone almost died. I almost died. Down throw, up B. Wow. That was so smart. Yeah. All right, Fox using side B, getting back on stage for free. Um, Paul gonna try and reset this. Okay, trying to catch the landing. And then he's jumping right now. That back air. That was actually, like, notice the two different oh. ideas. Yes, the Firefox. Nice there. He, back air. Oh, oh, no, he has no legit invincibility. Okay. I think the tilting helped him. Maybe. The fact it was tilting down, I think, is the reason forward smash didn't land. Uh, I possibly? Guess. Maybe. I, I don't really understand Lila's physics all that well. Okay, if he missed times an up tilt, that's why he's not going for it. Okay. Oh. He's these back airs. Both these guys. This is back air of the game. It's Smash 64 all over again. Whoever hits the first backer wins. Forward throw, gonna get him off. But yeah, getting him off doesn't mean the kill. <gasps> no, that's oh. fine. Weak Nair, you can't get anything off of that. You have too much rage and too much percent. Paul's managing to shield it. Another grab, but that's not gonna mean anything too. Paul's playing this really smart. He's shielding a lot versus Fox. He doesn't want to get hit by an actual kill move. He's just giving him the grab. That backer, and that's gonna take it. Wow, amazing patience, amazing survivability from yeah. Paul D. And he enters to clutch out that game. Yeah, Paul D definitely knew Pong's win condition, didn't give it to him at all, just kept letting him grab him. He's like, you're gonna grab me, but it's better than getting back here. It's better than getting up here. It's better than getting up tilted. Like, you're not gonna get the win off grabbing me. You're gonna get a, a good position to win the game, but you're not gonna get like an actual win off of it. Do you know if um in the new game, like, there's a trade, people die off the top and start KO again. Wait, wait, what? You know how, like, in this game, for instance, like, let's say, hypothetically. Well, that's every Smash game. You're talking about, like, well, like, understand that the, the way the ceiling blast zone works is that if you're in a knockback state, you get roofed. Understand? Yes. Right? Yeah. Right. So, I see no reason why that wouldn't be in the game. No, but what I mean is that there are the three types of dying off the top. Right. There oh, you mean like, is Star KO, KO still in the game? Yeah, it is. Star KO. But I mean, like, if there's a trade, like, for, let's say in that situation, Mario traded up smash with, like, back air. Mario's dying off the top, Pong will be dying off the side. You mean the reverse? Oh, you mean just, like, the time differences? Well, because, like, you know, if Paul, for instance, gets the top blast on farther, but 
as has a uh, like a star KO. I mean, you're just saying win. when they hit the boundary at the same time, but one person star KO'd. One person is dying off the top. Do you know if they just like they program it such that you don't have that anymore? You mean does it? You mean when they hit the boundary at the same time? It might even, be sudden death, no? Well, the whole point. No, okay. I'm not talking about boundary at the same time. I mean like oh, one, one is it hits stun. When, when you hit one. the boundary at the same hit. time, you're now initiating the star KO po potentially. But you know what? Let's talk about this. Not on. I can yeah. give you all the data you need. Thanks, I don't Dad. want your data. Thanks, Dev. Oh my god, I just realized that Dev's, Devin's name shortened as Dev. Like a... Like a... The eye stop, stop, stop. Dev. Or a... Mute, please. Oh, he tries to go for a Firefox read. He's gonna get damage for this. Fox is a fast faller, so he got hit by the outfair, and then he was able to shield. He stole the percent where Fox, if... Like a lot of characters, you know, they get juggled forever by that Mario yeah. up tilt. But Fox falls fast enough that it loan a percent. He, he just, uh, could DI down shield. a shield. All right, well now I think he's combo food. 30% is definitely combo food for Mario, so. Well, he has to get the combo started, and right now, Pong seems to not want to is. let him. <gasps> he died out very smart from Pong. Uh, I think Paul probably wanted to reverse that up smash, but nonetheless, he's back onto the ledge. Oh, no jump. He could have just went for the up smash. Paul has been like, getting hit and getting hit, but lately Pong has not been able to reliably kill him. Right as I say that, yeah. actually. That's the sort of thing where, if you remember last game, he lost because of that. Yeah. Like where he ran in and got back in. And yeah. this time he's like, yeah, I have a feeling that you really want those back airs to space in the empty air. Goes for the run and up smash and it works out really well yeah. for him. And you saw in his last set, 809 did the same thing. He's like, oh, you're jumping, you want to pressure me with back airs? I'm just going to run under you and up smash. And yeah, that, knew, that is actually yeah. something that Paul has always had a problem with. Like, you know, when I played against him, because I played against him a lot, you know, for both NYU, and it would just be like, I'm just going to wait until the end of the game, and then we're going to let up, up smash you. Up smash, not going to take it yet. Gets a trade with the jab, and almost gets that kill. Going to try and up tilt the get up. Ooh, or grab it. Paul's already taken 78%. Yeah, this but we best, know. This is best 3 out of 5, but do not want to go down, like, 2-1. If he could get the chance to, like, turn the counter picks around in yeah. his favor, that'd be huge. I'm just gonna say that bait was really good. So he's been jumping in a lot. So this time he did just like a neutral jump, stayed in place, and Pong's like, I'm gonna throw out a jab or a grab, and then he outspaced it and I'll smash it. So pretty good stuff from Paul getting that stock. Right now Paul has been on the ledge for so long, he gets off of it with a little bit too over eager move from Pong. This could be big! Oh, he wanted the upbeat, but in the end, he gets punished and died. I think he could have just caped, right? Uh, he could have caped, yeah. Because it would have solved him. Yeah, that was game. Back air, yeah, nair. So big. Jump cape, cape, yeah, jump yeah. cape, yeah. That was that was it. Unless, uh... Pong fixed his angle right away. <laughs> Unless Pong did that, like, big brain move. And, and just went towards this. fully went the other way yeah. to get cape. And then he would have died if in that scenario. Yeah. Imagine if... Pong was anticipating the cape, so he went the other way. Then he didn't actually get caped. That would have been yeah. funny. That would have been. I mean, we would have known what he was doing, though. Yeah. <laughs> that is unfortunate, though. Paul definitely had the game winning yeah. play there, and he just. It's so scary to think it's like, oh, he was at 20%, but he definitely had the game there. Yeah, and but it's also like, I mean, there might have been a bit of a, uh, a drop down war. Because like it could have been that although Fox falls very fast, yeah. you know that I don't think he could have made it back immediately with Uppy. Like you might have had to stall with Cape a few times, and like it would have been a matter of like who falls into the blast zone first. I think I think Paul was fine if he caped because Mario Mario's like not as fast while he's Fox, so Fox, Fox just would have fell really fast, and Mario just would have like settled down. Yeah. Anyway. I wonder if he had time to actually like double jump fair trade with the Firefox and win the game, you know? Or just double jump fair, not even if a trade, he might have just won the game. Yeah. I feel like he had options. I feel like, I feel like the Uppy was not the <laughs> move. That was like the scared play, you know? Yeah, exactly. That was like he wanted to get back to stage. Um, 
But like the upbeat, I can see the idea behind it. Amario has a lot of intention at the start. Yeah. And I think the idea was, let me go off stage, hit you with the upbeat on your way back. I'll make sure that I get back to stage and it's not sort of an all or nothing play. But in the end, it kind of... But he did land on stage too. So like he could have got Punisher. Like Fox could have passed well and then, you know, Punisher. Okay, good power shield into grab. Kong reading that Nair out of head sun. Ooh, di in. You're going to get up here for that. To the back air. Let's drop here. Good react. Did you see that reaction? It was crazy. He nared, retreated, and then turned around, up tilted on the roll. <laughs> Just training a little bit back and forth. A you know, that stare down when they're yeah. right in each other's zones. Okay. Down there. So dash attack. Paul at the ledge, but we know how good he is at getting off these ledge positions. He doesn't die off these. Yeah, that's definitely one thing that I feel like Kong could be working on a little bit better. His ledge trapping? His ledge trapping. Yeah. I mean, Fox is so good at ledge trapping, especially if you watch like players like Odyssey. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, maybe he doesn't need it. I. Naren's house has. He's definitely still managing to find his kills and his damage, so Paul is his last stock here, possibly. Last legs for sure, because this could be it for him. Okay. This is the BMB he needs. Nice. Keep him in disadvantage. He got his damage, like that. reset to neutral. Oh, he was anticipating the side B, but Pong going for the mix up. That was a good educated guess. Yeah, because like forced to up B yeah. was like. Technically suboptimal. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. He had the pivot forward smash. He did it after the uh, I think. Did he start to jab? Yeah. I like Pong's delay on his side B. He's yeah. like drifting. Letting the flood hit him because it will pop him a little higher. And then he'll do a side B after the flood's done. <laughs> Trading back and forth, but that trade will eventually work out for Pong. As right now, he has. Back there? Down throw, okay. Want to no keep jump. Back fresh. Yeah. There. Go for the flood. All right. <gasps> Just really missing, but that, still manages to. Nice reaction. A lot of people would have grabbed there on that getup attack, but Paul D's like, I'm going to kill you, so I'll smash it. All right. Paul now is finally Up throwing to down air. Oh, good DI. Just missed that pair. Okay. Down air. Up tilt, up tilt, up this air. Oh, gets him with a fear! Tech chase. Oh. <laughs> okay. Pong is spaghettiing. He yeah. He set a full hop back air in the other direction and a short hop fair in his direction. This is definitely uh, the crucial moment, considering how much of a lead Pong had. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, it's like he could very easily lose this, like super yeah. easily. If they both did 20% to each other, but then Paul got the up smash, that would be it. Okay. It's, and it's so scary to ledge trap Mario because I've been saying it like if you mess up a timing well, That was his chance to read the up smash and there it is that run up up smash once again Just that's the option. Paul gets a little bit too close. That was another that cape. Yeah. Huh? It was another cape I don't know because uh, yeah. he trumped him so he definitely wasn't gonna go for a Firefox I think he should have just ran where Pong was gonna be and charge an up smash. Yeah. Right now, we have uh, Noku against, what, what's this guy again? This is Zyvon. Zyvon. And, oh, footstool combo? Oh, oh we bad. almost. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. It didn't amount to quite as much, but it was still cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing is that, we talk about far and wide, and Noku is actually, I believe, the last survivor of all the entire Westchester crew who came down. Really? And they really came down in force. Uh, and he's done a fantastic job already making it to, this is winners, sorry, losers quarters. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed top five, but he wants to keep going. And he might have a chance, but Zyvon is in his way right now. I was talking to Zyvon actually a little while ago, and he said that he liked this matchup, even though he doesn't think it's too good for his character. Um, so far, he's been doing a really good job of um, catching Diddy's burst options, um, outspacing that forward air, which is a huge part of this matchup. You know, um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, shout outs to Mario Tennis Aces. Okay, did you see that entire stock? He won that entire stock by outspacing forward air. Yeah. And if he manages to keep doing that, then that's how he's going to win this match. 
Uh, I actually, earlier this week, uh, I saw Noku play against, it was Reno, Otacon. He okay. was playing Peach, and Reno really made it look convincing. And that- That was so quick. Noku doesn't know what to do against the character, mm -hmm. it seems. Because uh, I, I, he's trying to space with forward air, but Peach's micro spacing is just so good. And it's better than Diddy Kong's. Diddy yeah. is a character that wants to, um, that wants to catch characters and stop them from like floating. I'm sorry, What's I just up? want to interrupt because Bars is his coach, and Noku technically has a Bowser Jr. So I honestly think you should go Bowser Jr. once, considering uh, that Bars used to be a Bowser Jr. Man. I have seen Bars play Bowser Jr. and he has a pretty sick one. Oh yeah, but no, he used to be the best BJ in New York. <laughs> is there another best B Bowser Jr. in New York? Um. No. I, I withdraw my previous statement. <laughs> He might still be. I mean, I, I haven't seen this character anywhere, which is crazy because it's like the only low tier that we haven't seen. Um, There's a lot of low tiers here. Yeah, New York is sort of known for their low tiers. I mean, today yeah, right. we had Mexicano Zaibatsu making top 12. <laughs> Zaibatsu who plays uh, Ganon. Ganondorf. Yeah, I lost to him in round one, actually. <laughs> yeah, no, he's, yeah he's, he's really scary. Anyway, anyway. We're moving into game two here. I am very curious what Bars whispered in his ear. And Bars is a player who really, really smart, knows what he's doing. Yep. So I uh I really can expect some adjustments that might work out in uh Yoku's favor. Yeah, right off the bat, we're seeing uh so far, he's been getting the chip damage. He hasn't really gotten anything too crazy started, and Taiban's doing a good job of holding center stage so far. But one thing we haven't seen yet is one thing that you know Noku was doing a lot of was throwing out this, this forward air and disadvantage, mm -hmm. and Taiban was consistently out spacing it. Right. And I feel like he hasn't been doing as much of that. But if he does start doing that again. Uh, I feel like Zyvon could start getting really extended punishes. I like that weight on the recovery, because um, in the previous game, Zyvon had caught an early monkey flip with that downer. Um, so... Oh! Wow. That was beautiful coverage mm -hmm. from Zyvon. I really like how Zyvon uses, uh, uses items in general. Um, being a Peach main against City Kong can have its upsides. Although... Yep. Right there at that range. I think you're right in that Noku doesn't know too much about this matchup. Uh, he tried to uh, punish that forward air out of shield, which is really safe and spaced. Yeah. But And I, I think one nice adjustment he's been doing is that he sort of respects that Zyvon can out... Oh, that was so good! <gasps> yeah, but I feel like he's respecting the fact that Zyvon can outspace his hitboxes. Mm -hmm. And so he's been using a lot less forward air in neutral, a I lot agree. less just like jumping and aerialing. Instead, he's been relying more on like banana, on like grabs, and that sort of thing. Um, another thing that I want to see more of is that up tilt. Um, extremely fast uh, tilt, uh, has really good kill power, and... <laughs> good okay. job on air dodging, that would have been terrible for Noku. Yeah, but Zyvon uh, manages to keep that advantage state and kind of keep, no keep Noku on the back foot right now. Um, up smash could, not gonna kill. Could Banana help him out there in the survival? Um, doubtful. Okay. My good forward throw. This could be huge. Ooh. Ooh. He still survives. Still survives, and I don't know if he has... Oh, wow! Yeah, Noku just not ready for that. Mm -hmm. And that was some great ledge play. Siphon dancing around his shield. And that was it. Yeah, and Noku... That's two two stocks in a row. I think that he's just having trouble with this character to the point where maybe a counter pick could be in order. I know Noku, I mean, he hasn't played Peach Pikachu in a while. He used to play Pikachu. Pikachu. Um, I would actually really like to see Bowser Jr. Yeah, I mean, obviously probably not a really good matchup. Peach, you know, is able to stuff a lot of approaches. Don't say hi, Zyvon. Just <laughs> waves to the camera. So, you know, I don't, I don't really see him switching to Buster Jr. <laughs> Listen, I mean, a man somebody said he dream. had another character. I remember, I think he had, he had a villager. He doesn't really have a villager. He doesn't have a. He does not have a bayo. Sorry, I needed, to, I needed to think about it for a second. He does not have a bayo. I think it was a zoning character. Bayo, Either way, we see the Diddy again. So this green Diddy Kong is actually, I think, the the least seen one. You don't really get to see it too often. I personally really like it. 
I like how the lime green like goes against the the, the, the yellowish green. Yeah. I mean, uh, I feel like Diddy Kong colors because there were so many Diddy Kongs at one point. Yeah. It felt like every color was taken to the point where you know the colors really uh, reflected which player you most admired. I guess it makes sense. Sort of like a melee fox thing, you know. <laughs> like when people would play, you know. Orange Fox, because they're like, I love their magic. Yeah, Orange Fox in Melee actually is kind of like the... Well, think, thinking about it, you, you have like, what, you have Armada, you have Mango. At a time, I'm pretty sure... It, I, it's probably the most used color, honestly. Because of, you know, the, the, t the two of the best Fox players using it. Yeah. Either way. <laughs> um... Noku trying to keep this ledge trap going. We saw Zybon in the past doing a really good job getting around that banana at the ledge. But he might... Ooh! I don't know if that was SDI, but he got out of that up smash on the first hit. But honestly, I think already we've seen some nice adjustments from Noku. The stage might be a big part of that. Mm -hmm. I agree. Oh, what was the DI on that forward air? But, you know, Noku will take that for sure. And now that he has this stock lead, this is one thing that Noku is so good at. Yep. He's just playing to that stock Without a doubt. And I'm noticing a lot more. Uh, he's kind of re-implementing uh, the jumps in neutral, which uh, is good if he mixes up his approach. So he's using those monkey flips to... Um, oh, that was a bad air dodge, but he manages to get out. It was a good air dodge because he didn't get punished. I suppose so. Okay, bad monkey flip on shield, but he doesn't get punished, so I guess it was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> now you're thinking like a commentator. <laughs> but anyway, nice job getting the banana. But that's one thing about Noku is he plays around the opponent getting his banana super well. Uh, most of the time that's because he just goes and short hop fares and grabs the banana himself. But, you know, he has other ways of dealing with that. That forward air um, landing just before he can uh, get the hitbox out. And uh, Zaibon is doing a really good job at not getting hit by up smash. And if, when he does get hit by up smash, he's falling out of it twice now, and in the exact same way. So there might be a thing that he's doing with STI to get out of it. Oh, oh, angel drop. Yeah, great angel drop. But, but it was a little bit late, so he was above the stage. That is solid damage nonetheless, yeah. and the damage on Zaibon is something he has to be scared of. 118%, and... Diddy Kong might, it's true that he might struggle to kill, but he's just so consistent at doing it. Okay, but Peach is such an explosive character. So, ooh, okay. Yeah, especially with this much rage. Oh yeah, I think he might have some sort of kill combo right now. Definitely I mean, if he gets him off stage. Oh, ooh, really that up smash. Hit. It's actually went a lot higher than it looks like it should. <laughs> yeah. Also, I don't know if you saw it, but Noku immediately, uh, like, he got that up smash, and before he even, like, saw his opponent in the blast zone, he says, I banned triplats. <laughs> 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 he does not like those triple plats. Is, is, it, is it just a player thing? Uh, it's part Diddy Kong and part player. Okay. He just really just, I mean, like, if you're a Diddy Kong, you can't, in their platforms, you can't quite do normal Diddy Kong things. But now you're giving Peach uh, Smashville, which is by far and wide her favorite stage. Um, she can use that platform to um, to extend things and uh, get some interesting follow-ups. And um, also, I think Peach kind of loves having a small stage. Because it, as a character who microspaces a lot more versus a faster character who wants to macrospace, she um, she makes better use of the smaller uh, that of is the smaller. True. You're noticing but, uh, how Noku's like dashing back and forth. Yeah. And so he gets pushed to the corner a lot more easily. Exactly. He's retreating exactly. Like that. And he also doesn't have the right, since he doesn't have the space to dash around, as Diddy Kong is a who's a faster character, um, Peach gets a lot of advantage in neutral. But anyway. Okay. I think we've, Saibon, yeah, I say, I think you, we've seen some nice adjustments from uh, Noku. He doesn't necessarily take in the stock yet, but but as I say that, considering that he was two stock game one and game two, yep. 
already. I think that either it's Bars' wise words of wisdom, or it could just be that he's figured something out on his own because Zyvon's the one who's visibly frustrated right now. Yep, spacing around that forward air again. Um, and again, spacing around the forward air. And this is what is going to do Noku in if he doesn't uh, continue to, uh, to use that adaptation that he made. Ooh, falling up air, almost starting something. Okay, uh, Noku getting some solid damage from that banana and that combo. And, um... And here we see him now consistently racking up more and more damage. Zyvon has been trapped at the ledge for quite a while. That is a stitch face. Oh, matching his hat. Oh, he, he didn't recatch it. <laughs> he didn't, but that's already, like, the amount of damage that could give him the momentum to at least... You know, keep himself in a talk about my That's spacing. Did you see that? Oof. Okay, the roll behind not getting punished. Noku's in a terrible position right now. And there we finally have those downers. This could be huge. He oh. raised the getup, and that's it. That's the set for Siphon. That's crazy, because regular getup was the only thing that he was covering right then. He could have, okay, if he, if he rolled back, he could have, like, floated forward. No, no, forward, he also forward. covered roll, fo like, roll back because the platform was moving. Yeah, like, look at that. Because the platform was moving, roll back was also, uh... Can you play that replay again? Yeah. So, w get up attack would have actually been perfect right there. Mm -hmm. Because Peach actually yeah, that, cannot that's what air I was dodge. Thinking. He would have no des defensive opportunity. Yeah. I don't think he would have been able to catch the, the roll behind Peach. Well, he was waiting. He reacted to the yeah. initial getup. Yeah, it, it was a really good... Uh, it was just really great pressure. Yeah, no, that was just fantastic mm -hmm. stuff from Zyvon. That means Noku, the uh, lone Westchester representative, ends up dropping at 7th, but still he got top... No, dropping at 5th. So, yeah, no, that's really solid showing from him. And next in loser semis, we will have Pong versus Zyvon. Uh, but, oh, maybe if you had, like, the same amount that cycled through. But um, I feel like if that were the case... You'd have the the issue of um, of like not never having the reason to do anything besides the three hit. Well, but there's the fact of the matter that like the three hit might be a bit of a commitment, you know? Mm -hmm. Like be charging up for three. But like it's sort of like how a character would charge up a projectile. Like I the guess amount so. of time that it takes to go cycle through it twice. That's like I don't know, maybe half charge over Samus. Maybe. Either way, we see uh, Diddy Kong and not Villager. And I think it's a good, pretty good idea. Diddy Kong, a character that um, obviously is known for a really good neutral and anti approach game. And also, I feel like that banana out of shield is going to be of so course. important. The banana just stops uh, Meta Knight's ground game so well. Especially because, like, Meta Knight's dash attack can be hard to punish. Unless, you know, you have a little fruit in your hand that makes punishes very easy and straight. That's true. That's why it's so scary. Is it going? Okay. Do you remember? I remember. Um, it must have might have been Smash and Splash, maybe, when we saw Zero play an entire set against Ally and did not pull a single banana. Oh yeah. Yep. And that's crazy. That that just goes to show how um how scared Diddy's can sometimes be, um at their opponents. Oh, that super uh, that the, the the crouch slide. Did you see that? Yeah, he did that. He did that actually I earlier love that. on. He won a set with that, like a last did he? match against uh, Amazon's uh, Zomba. That's sick. Oh, is he gone? Are we gone? Wow. No, he's gone. We're still here. All right. <laughs> at the very, at the very least, we're alive. Yeah, 809 was definitely one of the guys who people were talking about. Oh, he is a huge, was he? big chance to take this whole thing. Where is he from? Uh, Bronx. He's from the Bronx. Bronx. Did we just hear him switch to Bayonetta? I think I heard Bayonetta. Have you ever seen Monster's Bayonetta? I have not, but we'll see how it fares. And fair we will see. <laughs> I mean, if he does this oh. right, wow! So cool. I'm actually, I've, I've actually never seen the Nair to extend that. It's actually something that 809 does a lot. Mm -hmm. Did he just take this first stop? Uh, oh my god! <laughs> Look at Mantra's face. He regrets this. He's just like, yeah. You know, this matchup on paper seems like it'd be really bad for uh, 
for Meta Knight, but I feel like a lot of Meta Knights have, you know, the, the tools, and also, like, um, his punish game on Bayo is so strong. Oh, oh my god, look at the way that he's just playing with But he's Bonsha. just reading the crap out of him. He, yeah. If you notice how much damage he's done this stock with special moves? <laughs> he's take. Do you notice how much damage that uh, Moncho has done in total? <laughs> That's 30%. <laughs> That's it. And right Don't forget, a good amount of that has been uh, Blast Zone damage. <laughs> that is true. Oh, that could be big. It was. I do not think we're going to see the Bayonetta again. Oh, without a doubt. Yo, he almost died to the, <laughs> the Tornado. <laughs> Smash, yeah. Well, that was smash. a very, very quick game. At least it's nice to know that Bayo isn't the kind of character that you can just bust out as a secondary and, like, fix all your problems. Well, sometimes. Not against Meta Knight. Not against a Meta Knight who's in your head. Yeah, he was, like, 809 was so deep. That, uh, did you only clip the end of that? You didn't clip the rest of that beautiful stop? <laughs> All right, this no, is what I was expecting. This is what I was actually excited to see. Yeah. Was the villager versus the Meta Knight. And yes, this is going to be tricky, but it's his villager. And if you've seen his villager so far tonight, it's pretty cool. Yeah, this is really exciting. Um, villager, what do you, I mean, yeah, I guess in this matchup, there, there's a certain range where villager is winning. And if it's not that range, then Meta Knight is winning. <laughs> I mean, it's a matter of who gets kills. Yeah. Because, it, like, Villager's probably going to be killing Meta Knight, like, if he's not killing him with, like, crazy early stuff, then it'll be, like, in the hundreds plus. Yep. And that's the range where he can just die now. I think a thing that we're going to be uh, looking for is that bowling ball to catch Meta Knight's recovery, because uh, his recovery moves are pretty linear and pretty, like, just catchable. <laughs> well, the thing is that he's great at stalling his recovery that yeah. night off stage. So the bowling ball... It could be a good option, but I would kind of expect 809 to be able to play around it. Oh, he fell out the side. Oh, and he fell into the blast That's zone. the worst thing that can happen when you up B. And you know, it happens to a lot of characters, too. I mean, if you saw that fast enough, because he was so scared of the punish. Yeah. And then in the end, kind of did himself in. And that can be huge for Mancho's uh, momentum. Yeah. As assuming he can get some, some damage off from the stock. Well, this is a villager that's forcing the other guy to approach. And right now, he's running right into all of those slingshots, and that's where... <laughs> it's not just slingshots, it's rolls. We were talking about how 809 was in Moncho's head. It seems like they've swapped yep. bodies because, yeah, Moncho is looking pretty good right now. And this is where the frustration starts to set in. If you, you know, you SD and then you start, like, running into villager projectiles, you feel like there's nothing that you can do. <laughs> You know, he read the air dodge, but he just uh, drifted to the other side. <laughs> Did you notice the slow drift on those balloons? Yeah. That was so smart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it looks silly, but it's very smart. Just massive, like mixing up that timing. And he is in his head. Oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> in his head, right as you say it. Oh. He just charged a forest smash in neutral, and this man just rolled into it. <laughs> Look at 809's expression here. He's just like... And this could be exactly the momentum switch that is exactly <laughs> what Mancho needs in this set. Jesus. Okay, we're going to FT. You know, I, I'm not sure I like this pick. Given that um, kind of what did him in at the end of that uh, game was running into projectiles. Ah, uh, he is up. Two, he is up two games. Yeah. This could also be, and I mean, this is probably just pure base speculation, but it could just be really eager to figure out what Mancho's is. Okay, and this is the best stage to do it on. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I mean, granted, you always want to win the game. You never want to let your opponent bring you into a game five. But it could just be that he wants to figure out his neutral, and that he's mm -hmm. confident that once he does, he can outplay him. Very outplayed. Yes, outplay. <laughs> the, being outplayed comes in many shapes and many forms. There are many others like it, but this one is Meta Knight's. One of which is playing into your opponent's win condition. You know what's so scary? That forward smash might have actually killed. That was actually really cool. The uh, the wall jump up there to get onto the stage. Oh yeah. And bowling ball. 
Wow, that was actually an amazing bowling ball. It's a little bit of a... Uh... Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, 809, not getting caught on those roll leads. So but he much. still seems really confident. He's going for reads, but it doesn't. it's not quite reads that are reaching. As I say that, he almost gets just comboed up the top if you eat my words. Okay, nice damage. Even more for 809. And keep in mind, this might only be the second game with uh, Montrose Villager, but this is the fourth game in the set. If mm -hmm. 809 takes this stock right now, that's it. For that was Montrose it. in winners. Damn. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Yep, that's a. Uh... <laughs> I guess we're gonna not bring that up right now. <laughs> but, um, yeah. anyway, so 809, kind of to be, not necessarily to be expected, but. Run up up smash. And back air is a slow move on startup, and Peach has a lot of really fast frame data in the air. But more importantly, Peach is so good at forcing whiffs. Yep. And that back air is safe on shield, it's super safe on shield. Like, might even be safe on power shield for a lot of characters. Yeah. But nothing in this game is safe on whiffs. Especially against Fox, <laughs> yeah. who's one of the fastest characters in the game and has some crazy punish potential. And right off the bat, we're seeing a lot of. I think we're seeing a button check. I think right we're seeing a button check. No. I. <laughs> I okay. I think I can't this is a real game because. Oh, no, no, it's a button check. They're not gonna reset. I don't know. Saibon know knows on. they should tournament. They should check on a non-tournament stage. Are they just getting into it? Are people doing this again? What Don't is this? Do what? this guys. <laughs> Why are you if you if you're either one of these, think about how upset you'd be if you end up getting timed out because of the 30 second yeah. difference. Like, I, don't, I don't really don't think we're gonna see a timeout involving Fox or Peach at all. But <laughs> I mean, but if you did. <laughs> but if you did. There's no reason not to just reset the game. Yeah. I think it's kind of a um, a mutual agreement to not play uh, claim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this pressure right yeah. now. He likes this matchup. And right there, yeah, um, Zybon's doing such a good job to just stay right out of Fox's range. That forwarder Ooh. almost taking it. Yeah. Uh, he went back for getting that Fox side B's. He can't do it again. Um, yeah, so we did the high side B. Uh, I feel like Zaman could have gone down and covered the Firefox, but as it stands, played it safe, and now we're in the position where there is a lot to dive on. That is a big threat, yeah. like that meaty forward there. I like it. I like the pressure that he's exerting, and I like the range that he's playing at. All right, but Pong definitely not going to just give up after the first stock. He wants to tack on this percent. 85 onto Zyvon, and given the kill power that Pong has at his disposal, he could even this up really quick. A big thing that um, that I like from Peach in this matchup is uh, her ability, um, despite being a, a floaty, her ability, oh! I, yeah, he definitely saw that coming, and he definitely tried to uh, challenge it, but I think he just a little bit misinterpreted the, the pullback on Fox's force smash. Yeah. Anyway, what I was going to say is, um, despite being a floaty, Peach actually has a lot of really good mix-ups to get down to the ground. She has a really good air dodge, and um, she has her float. She has her float, she has her forward air, she has neutral air. Yeah. She can just empty land, so she's like a floaty character with like mix-ups on what normally makes a floaty character so weak. Yep. Regardless, um, we're seeing Zyvon kind of, or I'm sorry, we're seeing Pong uh, capitalize on a lot of these little weaknesses, which is kind of Peach's... I, what, what are you saying? Oh, I was just going to say that. Yeah, we saw the beginning of this match was so dominant for his Ivon, but now it feels like a lot of that micro spacing is just not working out the same way. Hong is mixing up his timings, and Zyvon, yep. like, look at this, getting, he's gotten hit by that side beat like, quite a few times now. And his character, who has um, such good approach options as Fox, um, that's really how you beat micro spacing. Is by um, is, is by changing up your timing. He just got right out of that space. Did you see that perfect pivot backwards shield? I believe that's what that was. If you can get a yeah. replay on it, that was just so beautiful. Fox's yeah. perfect pivot shield is actually sick. He slides in the ground. Yeah, oh, that was so right. Good.
That was so good from uh, from Pong, and he actually takes game one, which is which matters a lot considering the fact that Zyvon was the one who knocked him into losers. Not only that, but Zyvon also started the game out with a lot of momentum. He got the stock really early. All right, we're gonna be having Smashville game two. I really like this because Peach forward. Yeah. yeah. That move is gonna be killing off, killing so early on the sides. And for the same reason that I was saying before, Peach really likes this stage. Um, when you know Fox wants to move around a lot, he corners himself. Okay, and um, actually, this is yeah. similar to game one where, you know, really strong start for Zyvon, but we saw how that ended up turning out. I love those perfect shields. He's doing more of them. That's a stitch. Stitch face. Oh, oh what that is that it? Snipe. That was so good. And the taunt. He even yeah, waited out the reflector. Him. That was so good from Zyvon. Yeah. This is the long-lasting hitbox of that. It was just the stars aligned perfectly, and he took advantage. And now he has a pretty much a whole stock lead to work with here. Pong, you know, Fox has ways to even up stocks. Of course. But the way that Zyvon's playing, I think Pong is going to have to really make a solid read in order to do something like that. Yeah, speaking of um, Fox's ability to, to take early stocks, are, do you know if Fairfoot still works in this matchup? I'm not sure it does. I know, I, mean, has, I know he has issues connecting it against some bigger floaty characters. He had, uh, it's hard to do against Bowser, surprisingly enough. It's hard to do against, I, I think, Mewtwo. Um, oh, no, I've definitely seen it happen with Mewtwo. It might be difficult, but uh, I would think he could do it. You have to fastball it a different way. Yeah, you have to fastball in a different way. And also, I feel like if she had her jump, she yeah. might just be fine. That forward air almost killed. Back air is going to do it. And um, I think from Pong, we need to see um, some better recoveries. Well, that's what we saw in game one. He was recovering pretty well. And then game two, it could just be that, you know, Zyvon figured it out, downloaded what he was trying to do. Yeah, those side Bs, I, that also is kind of just a panic option. Yeah. Game one, though, you saw him do that high side B, and Zyvon wasn't able to, wasn't really there to cover it. That time around, yeah, he had it. On I want to see, I want to see some more Firefox mix ups. Um, Firefox being a move that has a lot of angles to it you can you can kind of do like the melee thing i feel like it's a thing that almost is uh got lost in translation between smash 4 and melee or maybe the other way around um is the crazy firefox angles and um the only top box that you really see um using crazy uh up angles is light yeah I mean, there are actually quite a few foxes, like Jaku, I know. It seems like he goes out of his way to get, like, the angle perfect uh, Yeah, like, like recoveries. the ledge. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of times you can just angle yourself to evade your opponent rather than go straight to the ledge. And, um... The only thing about that is keep in mind Peach is float. Yeah. That it, like, a big part of how she covers Fox a lot of, is, She covers a lot of options like that. The big thing about Fox and how he manages to mix up his recoveries is by stalling. You know, either by right. shine stall, by using side B as opposed to up B, whether by jumping. But if he just floats at the ledge, yep. what is there he can really do? At the same time, um, shine stall is good, but we, we've seen that forward smash so many times, and it's been doing Pong actually a lot of work in this set so far. Well, you know, that's Zyvon has been jumping off the ledge quite a bit, and yeah. that is certainly an effective option for dealing with that. It actually deals with almost every option. It's actually a crazy move um, to, to cover things in the ledge. <laughs> Forward air is going to do it. Speaking <laughs> of a crazy move, I realize that was a questionable the DI from Pong, but that move killed so early. Forward air is weird. It's a weird move because it's really slow, like the frame, but frame data wise. But because the animation is kind of ambiguous in the beginning, it seems faster than it actually is. So a I lot mean, of times, it's an aerial smash attack. Yeah. It has like similar uh, frame data to a smash attack. It just happens to be that you can stay mobile while doing it, which was what makes it so safe. Well, it's funny because it's like the exact same forward air that you get from Dr. Mario and from Ganondorf. But the difference is that Peach just has such good aerial movement, and neither of those characters do, that she can actually utilize it a lot better. Not only that, but you have to keep in mind ending lag, like landing and lag, landing lag, and range. Don't, don't forget that, yeah. Yeah, I believe that, yeah, Pong had the lead to start, but now all of a sudden, this is looking dangerous for him. Zyvon isn't necessarily Ooh. that so beautiful, and you actually hear mm -hmm. him stomp. I felt that through the floor. 
Ivan looking like he might just take this. The way that he's adapted, the way that he's been playing so strong. And the way that he's, uh, de like, I think the thing that he's doing the best is just catching approaches. Yeah. And then pushing that advantage as far as he needs to do. Three, two, one, go! Alrighty. <laughs> Alright. Anyway, um, we are moving on to this game. Is it game three? Is that it? Or is that game? I feel like that was game. Oh, yeah, it's it's two one okay, in favor of Ivan. That score will be updated in just a second. There it is. And I feel like this is how a lot of these matches have started, where Pong has a good understanding, and then uh, over time he just can't close out a stop, or he just has you know trouble figuring out exactly what he needs to do in order to avoid those kill moves from Zyvon. Oh, you see that? Okay, here's what he was talking about before. Catching those back airs in startup. You can't really... Ooh! That killed so early, and that's the sort of early stock that we haven't really seen from Pong yet. You know, that's Town and City. That's, a. Uh, yeah, Pong actually uses, utilizes the stage so well. He's really good at keeping people up at platforms and, um, and noticing how he can use them. I want to see maybe some more, some more like perfect pivot back shields. Yeah. Because Zyvon is using that forward air a ton in disadvantage, and he's just kind of getting away with it for that free. Be it? <gasps> that was a really good angle. <laughs> back air going to work out for Zyvon. A little bit of a trade, but hey, when you take out the opponent's stock, you will absolutely be okay with that. All right. Um. Yeah, and it's like what you were talking about before the set. Zyvon is trying really hard to outspace those back airs, and it seems to be working. He maybe isn't able to punish every single one, but... He's doing what counts. Yeah. And, uh... Okay. He's gonna punish that out of shields. That was a really unsafe forward smash! He still manages to get that stuck. Yeah, the forward smash, I believe that crossed up, and so that neutral air out of shield completely whiffed, leaving, uh... Pong to just take that game. We're now entering game five here. The winner of this gets to fight against Moncho, and Zyvon lost to Moncho in winners, so I know he really right. wants that one back. I know he really just wants to keep his tournament life alive. He is so close, so close right now to getting uh, getting near the, the end. And we're going back to FD. Um, I, I can't imagine Pong having... Uh, uh, Banned anything that besides uh, Smashville, and um, this is definitely Peach's second best stage after that. <laughs> Ooh, okay, that down, that down air actually almost caught that. All right, this flat stage. Although I feel like there are a lot of advantages for Peach, you see that Pong knows that maybe his laser game can be a little bit more effective, especially yeah. if Zyvon is just going to float at a far away distance. You know, he can easily just like short hop, like laser, get little bits of damage in, because little bits of damage mean that his combos, especially at these percents, will work even more effectively. Yeah, um, I definitely think that uh, Peach definitely uh, is better without the platforms, just given that Fox can't um, follow up vertically. But um, regardless, um, Zyvon actually, I feel like he baited that out. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that was actually something that we saw earlier on. It's a nice adaptation that Zyvon will be floating, you know, just floating in midstage. And Pong is like, you can't air dodge side B. And it was this really fast option. Zyvon was prepared for it, and he kept getting hit by it. Oh, and dash attack into up B. Yeah. And I'm sorry, up air. Yeah, dash attack to up air, and now Zyvon is down by quite a bit, and this is the end of his tournament run, possibly. But Pong can taste victory. This is a big lead for him, and he is looking to just get little bits chip damage so that, you know, he can reliably just play to a lead. Okay, right now we're seeing Zyvon go for a lot of really big commitments. You see how he's running forward? That forward air is going to do it. Woo. And we are at the last stock of this set. And pretty that much, I, as long as Ivan's able to um, stay patient. Both these guys, though, I don't know if patience is on their mind. I, they can taste the victory. Yeah. They're both throwing out these hitboxes, these projectiles. And 
Neither one of them is getting a huge advantage, although Zyvon has taken a lot of percent. But his punish game has been so consistent on this Fox that Hong needs to stay careful. Okay, we see that spacing on the shield. I feel like we're going to see an up smash eventually. The up smash is definitely a possibility, but... <gasps> Ooh, Zyvon he manages to get out. That I'm not sure that would have killed, it. but... I, I, I think it has killed around that percent before. Yeah, this is the percent where, like, if he does actually go for the up smash, like, run up up smash, he won't get punished with a death. This is so scary. Oh, that perfect shield. Simon was still able to get away, but right now he's at 105%. There is a lot that Fox can do, but there's a lot Peach can do. Okay, so so far Pong has gone for the immediate up air every single time, and Zyvon has uh, uh, air dodged it every single time. And I feel like the next time he gets shot up, we might see an air dodge read. Um, oh god, this is so close and so scary! And that's the that up, up smash, smash. run-up up smash that we have been talking about! Zyvon puts his head in his hands! Wow. He is so upset, he knew that the victory was so close to him, but he shakes Pong's hand as Pong now gets to... A chance that entire to set, take uh, that entire set, I don't think we saw a single up smash. Yeah, that's something he did against Paul a lot, though. If you notice, Paul D, he I got yeah. like two or so really clutch, just run up up smashes, and that was the option that, like we were talking about it, it's mm -hmm. it's hovering there in the back, and the fact that we did not see it until that super important moment, we had seen up smashes, but that was like up smash in the corner, up smash had a shield, and although like Simon maybe could have thinking about it, he wasn't aware of it as this neutral tool that could just get in and end his tournament life. Of course, and he's oh, a yeah. lone survivor from there. I believe we, so we have one Long Island boy, one Bronx boy, and one uh, Puerto Rican boy. Mancho is from Puerto Rico, right? Well, yes, but I think he resides in Long Island. Uh, if I'm, if I'm oh, does he reside on Long Island? Yes, it's somewhere deep in Long Island, somewhere where people, where the internet connection doesn't reach, so. I, I, <laughs> so yeah. Right but we got, uh, yeah, Pong and Mancho. Yeah, I mean, like, Mancho is, um, he's, pre yeah, he's pretty good. I mean, like, I know when he first got here, he was going to a lot of tournaments, and he was, like, getting, like, you know, pretty decent wins. I, I, I believe this was him. I played against him at my second ever Nebs tournament. That sounds terrible. No, wow, no, no, it couldn't have been. What? Oh, whatever. Wait, oh, are, you, are you saying he wasn't in the New York scene in, like, 2016? Mm, late. But yeah, I mean, right now, okay, so right now Pong has a uh, monster at the ledge. He's doing the Fox, you know, the Fox uh, frame trap things. Alright, 69% on Pong, but he's managed to take the entirety of Monster's stock. This is looking really good for him. You know, Pong, definitely a solid player, but I'm impressed with the run he's had today. And already in Loser's Finals, he's managed to, uh... Take this first stock and possibly a lead with a first game, depending on if he's able to hold on to this. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, like, you know, it's pretty, you know, pretty solid. I mean, I know, like, he is well versed in like pretty much all the matchups you could tell. I mean, we're, I mean, New York, we're well versed in video matchup, but like, he's doing really well right now. He's gonna trade? <gasps> oh, that was maybe a bit much. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, that was a root grab. Yeah. He didn't. He did drop from ledge to ledge. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're such a big. Well, that's the answer point. Okay, now, but he's still in firm <laughs> command of that lead, and that happened. I think we're gonna see the loser. Beautiful. Like we've seen the Diddy Kong quite a few times from Mancho, but like his villager has been what's been uh, like. It's definitely what's impressed me. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think villager is his main, and he picked up Diddy Kong later on to counteract some like the top tier characters. But um, I think yeah, I think he's sticking with, sticking with Diddy Kong. I think his Diddy Kong is well versed enough to deal with this and overcome this deficit he's at right now. So. Hey, Ralphie SSB just scribed, subscribed. Thank you so much, Ralphie. You know, it's like a pleasure it. commentating with you earlier. Yeah, he's also colluding. He was colluding the bracket earlier, but we're not going to talk about that right <gasps> now. We're going to go to Defeat. Smashville. Uh, I mean, I like this pick. You know. Oh, oh what a shot! Oh, that was. That was like melee shine, Using how quick the, that was. I, you know, I wouldn't say melee, because in melee, they don't use the shine as intended, Sakurai intended. Well, I know it was not how Sakurai intended, but they do jump cancel it yeah, very they, quickly. Yeah, and they shine cheat. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was a great, that was a great call out by Pong. But right now we have Mancho in the lead. Um, 
I, I think maybe he, you know, he, he took what happened to him game one and kind of, just kind of adapted to it. Because I think, like, Kong was running all over him. Wow. That's so good. Right now, Pong taking that first stock, and I'd say that he's playing confidently. Yeah, I, I think that was pretty unfortunate on Mancho's end because I, I definitely don't think he'll expect to land on stage. He looked very surprised when he landed on stage with that up air, fall, uh, up air from below the stage. So. All right, that's a grab to start, possibly. It's getting a little bit of damage here, but that back air closing out Pong's first stock. It's basically an even game, but... Yeah, yeah, he, I mean, he, took, he took it pretty quickly. Better than he did the last game, so much more even game than game one, by far. Yeah, right now, um, Manto's trying to get some stuff started. Like, he's hitting with a lot of back airs, and Pong is not shielding. He's just, <laughs> he's definitely just trying to hit him with all the buttons. I mean, shielding against Diddy Kong is it's a tricky affair, especially when he has banana. Yeah, I, I think I think right now Mancho is realizing that Pong is trying to speed up the pace and press a lot of buttons, and Mancho is not feeding into that like he was in game one. And I think more of a slower pace match, especially for Diddy Kong and Mancho's playstyle, um, a lot better in the long run than what he was doing. Game one. And Pong has taken a lot of percent here. He's at 118 already, but Fox has tons of kill power. We've seen it so many times before. Yeah, this could be a huge possibility. He actually gets a back air, putting Mancho into the corner, continuing this ledge pressure, but not a stock yet. Yeah, I think I think Mancho just needs to slow it down a little bit and take in what's happening. Because uh, I mean, how do you slow down when a fox is in your face, grabbing you, pummeling you, doing everything? Yeah, you I mean, you have to, because if you don't, you're gonna get you're gonna explode. See, that's what like. He, he was doing very well in the beginning of the, of the game, and then as the game went on, he tried to speed up and speed up, speed up a little bit. And what happened was he just got caught up too much into the speed. And he just the died. thing is that like the speed wasn't like the speed of neutral, because if you notice, that was like so much of that was just pong an advantage. Yeah. He put him, hit him once, hit him off stage, hit him, got the like you know the read, the coverage on the ledge, and he is staying Diddy Kong. I. I don't necessarily know how to... Are you kidding me? Okay. <laughs> I thought he was just going to die, like, from a single tap kitty. Oh, no, he didn't explode yet. I yeah. mean, he could have gone down there and down there. Speaking uh, of downer, good job from uh, Pong. Oh, my God. They're both trying to kill each other. They're both they're trying, trying to kill themselves. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, wow. Yep. Did you? That was cool. You did door forward throw into... Pop gun into forward throw. Nice. Interesting. Yeah, I, I think I think Mancho will be fine if he just keeps the same pace. I feel like ever since game two when he started with his slower pacing, he was doing well, but he got too wrapped up in his box's speed. You can't let that happen. I know it's, it's easy to say, but... The thing, this is the thing. Like, pay attention to the fact that, like, how do you slow down when you're just, like, being put on top of this guy constantly? Go to ledge. <laughs> Go to ledge against Fox? You have to. Uh, I, I mean, if you're gonna stay in there and get up there, would you rather stay in there and get up there or go to ledge and just? What's happening? <laughs> okay, uh, everyone's alive. Oh my god! Not everyone, not much, but you know. That was so unfortunate. That's pretty good right now. Oh, okay, good catch. That is a great use right there. Wow, down back to a backer did not take it at 165. He's living. I feel like he's definitely gonna get something like an up tilt. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so what, what's the opposite of love? Um, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Pong is actually like we need to talk wow. about the fact that Pong like is about to take this. And, th and this is what I'm talking about. If there, there's no point in trying to land on top of Fox. He he just ate forty percent from trying to land on top of Fox. When I know being at ledge against Fox isn't the most favorable thing, but you'd rather take that over trying to approach Fox in the air. The helper just subscribed. I uh, shout outs to helper wherever you are. Yeah, I don't know where. I don't know where he is. Uh, uh, I can almost hear him in my heart. You hear the ghost of helper. Anyway, um. Yes, that was actually really good stuff from Pong. Taking that 3-0, very convincing. Yeah. And now he's going to be fighting against 809, who's waiting in grand finals on the winner's Ooh. side. And one nice thing about this matchup is that it's going to be uh, splody Doty. Yeah, two characters that just, 
make each other explode. Have you ever gotten hit forever? Uh, <laughs> so we're going into we're going to town. It's, oh wow, we're starting to town. Too. We're we're I feel like we're definitely gonna see people explode on this stage. Oh my god. How do you feel about this matchup, by the way? Um, have you ever gotten hit forever? I, I feel I feel like it's still relevant. Both of these characters, like, you know, Fox, he doesn't necessarily get laddered off the top the way that other characters do against Meta Knight, but his ability to just, like, drag, like, Fox into the side blast on almost like Bayonetta uh, is crazy. Oh, yeah. He's just, like, all 809 really needs is that proper setup, that right time, and guys just wow. end. Yeah, um, Meta Knight do, does have the side letter combos if you're not too familiar with it. Uh, those do work at certain percents of certain characters. I'm not sure. I think Fox is out of the side letter ladder percent, but yeah, those, that's definitely a thing. Did he just cancel? Did that just happen? Did I just cancel? How do you do that? I don't know. We're in 2018 and I've never seen it in my life. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, so right now, um, yeah. 809. <laughs> what? How he's, did he know? He's How been, did he know the dashing was just going to come? He's been doing that all tournament. Yeah, right now, 809 is putting in a lot of work right now. He's not really letting Pong set up his offense. And it's mostly from his offense that Pong is allowed to put the game. Yeah, I feel like 809 knows, like, he was one of the favorites to take this tournament. He's the one sitting in grand finals on the winner's side. He's not going to have any upstart Fox get in his way. Oh, yeah. <gasps> Platform actually helping Pong out right there. Yeah. Shout outs to Smash yeah. 5, you get to disable platform movement on Town City. I'm sorry, Smash Ultimate. Yeah, so I think I think what we're seeing here is that uh, what what Pong was doing last set, he was uh, he just kept pressing forward on Mancho. And and Mancho is kind of just accepting the pressure and not really trying to reset situations. Right now, Pong is trying is trying to press forward and 809 is not letting him assert his dominance whatsoever. Like the thing is that Pong is trying to take it patient. You saw earlier that like he didn't want to approach, he didn't want to approach, but it was the instant he did, the instant he dashed in, he got forward smashed. So it's not enough to just like be patient. You have to have pa patience with the game plan. Yeah. Of like, think about what the opponent is actually going to be trying to do to you. Yeah, yeah, and it's very important against Meta Knight to have a game plan because Meta Knight is one of those characters, if you don't have a game plan, you will die. Like, you will I'll just die. explode off the top. You will explode off the side. Something will happen if you do not have a game plan against Meta Knight. He's just one of those characters. So, I mean, let's see if Pong could bring it back and, you know, reassess the situation at hand. Um, you know, right now he's taking a good, you know, long break. Dark Blues is talking to him, trying to coach him up. So, this, which is great because this is what, you know, this type of tournament is for. Oh, yeah. How was your experience with coaching? Um, I coached Noku and he lost, but he was very receptive. See, here's what, the thing. He's very receptive. I should have sent you. I should have sent you a message because Noku actually has a Bowser Jr. and he should have just gone. No, he shouldn't have. Not against. What Peach. do you? What do you mean? You know he should have. I don't no, care if the should. matchup's bad. You know I, I would have. I would have paid not, you money to I, feed him misinformation. I I am not a bad coach. <laughs> I will not coach somebody to their demise. I do have to say though that uh, he was playing the match really well. It was just a, a couple of misinputs, but he was really. He's really receptive to information. He's really, you know, he's a really good player, Noku. Oh, yeah. No, Noku's definitely solid. Really, really and he's been player. on the come-up in Westchester. I think he's uh, going to be aiming for that number one in Westchester slot. Yeah. And he definitely showed it by getting top five in this event. But these are the guys who got top two. That comment, that, that uh, coaching break, let's see how well it'll work out for Pong. Yeah. Evidently yeah. better than the game one, at yeah. least to start in the first 15 seconds. Yeah. So I, I feel like Pong is actually taking more of a uh, slower approach than he did last game. So I think the last game he did a dash attack and then ate 60% because dash attack not safe. And he oh. just died for that? Oh, no, no. He's <laughs> making it back. But I do think that, like, you notice the difference between how he's being patient this time versus last time. He's having, like, productive patience. The yeah. lasers being that far away, although he did end up getting caught by the dash attack, at the very least, it forces 809 to come in and do something. Yeah, patience with a game plan, like you were saying. And no, you didn't. Okay, good, good DI out. What a down arrow out of shield! Like yeah. Meta Knight is one of the two characters in the game that have down arrow out of shield as an option. Yeah, yeah, down, like down air for Meta Knight is really weird because it's not, it's not really a kill move. It's kind of just like a combo extender, kind of an added till get off me option. Not really. Uh, really, really interesting move. 
Look at these like 10 perfect pivots from 809 just to show he can. I mean, hey, he, he's hit people with perfect pivot forward smash at least six times on stream. So Perfect pivot like forward forward smash or backwards forward smash? Um, like perfect pivot back or forward smash or perfect pivot forward and forward smash? Probably both. Probably both. Oh, he DI'd in. I don't know why he DI'd in. Maybe he's expecting a forward throw or not a up throw? I mean down throw, excuse me. Yeah, down throw. Okay. Yeah, right now Pong is doing a lot better than he did last game. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, good patience by 809. Fox is definitely love to throw out the option. It's a lingering hitbox. Very strong. Oh, Ooh. so one thing is that uh, so many times this tournament, we've been seeing 809 go for the trump. Wow. And I think he's even done a few times this set. But Pong is not fighting it. That was very clearly like a trump feint. But uh, Pong got back safe and sound. Lately, his recoveries have been just working yeah. out for him. And, and right as I say that, it's an overextension on that forward yeah, smash. Yeah, I mean, just like, it's like, you know, <laughs> it's his instinct to just, you know, try to go for these hard options. But sometimes you have to beat the instinct. Because right now, you, you, mean, you can't afford to do that. Every time he's done that, he's gotten called out for it. Yeah. That okay. back is going to close it out, but about 30% onto Pong's body. I feel like this is very dangerous, mainly because it's like good combo percent. We'll see that right now, possibly. Wow. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think he couldn't get that lock, so I think that's why he just went for the up air, but... But nonetheless, and great patience by Pong walking away from that tornado. We couldn't get a lot, a lot um, off of that yeah. exchange there. Oh, wow, that's the dash attack that we haven't really seen him do lately. And although that was like a run across the stage and like no dash attack, I feel like 809 just wasn't ready for it because it was something he hadn't seen in quite a bit. Oh, but that's something we see all the time. Great stuff from uh, 809 just closing out game two. He's one game away from being Grand champion in the money. Yeah. Um. I don't. I don't. I'm not. I don't like that. Di. Uh. That SDI from Pong. It looked like he SDI up and away, and 809 just read that and killed him. I feel like you know in that situation you have to SDI down in a way. And I think actually he actually SDI up and through him, and 809 just read it. I mean, happens. I'm not sure if that's what Dark Blues is telling him, but. At the very least, that game was a big improvement over game one, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. A I very mean, big improvement. And if he continues at that trajectory, I could see him taking this next game. But 809, he's not the kind of guy to just sit by and let his opponent adapt without doing anything. Yeah, he has to do something to stop this momentum. Because, uh, this is the last game. This is, of course, tournament life. And, I mean, right now, 809 is poised to take this. Forward wow. smash crossing up. That's actually how he beat um, Zyvon. That was crazy. Yeah, I think he's just trying to pressure his shield. And he did a really good job because Amnon rolled right away. He's like, I'm not going to take another button. <laughs> okay, try to get that back air lock. Right the roll. Wow. <laughs> what a re grab. Look at that damage. That's honestly quite a chunk of change. Yeah, that whole interaction netted him 34%. Granted, Meta Knight's weird because he kind of has like. Cheek Pikachu Syndrome, where he hits you like 70 times and does like 30 damage. But he also like kills really early. Yeah, Man Knight also has a DP out of shield that makes make people explode. So, um, but yeah, but right now, um, Pong is getting off to a much better start and he's taking his time. I feel like, you know, he's taking his time on the ledge more. Like, he's backing away, trying to see the option 809 is going to do. Interestingly enough, you still see him going into 809's face a lot. It's not necessarily the same patience from before, where he's, like, on the other side of the stage and lasering. Now it's like, I'm going to be in your face. I'm going to just barely space outside of whatever move you're going to, you know, throw out at me. Yeah, he's playing more mid-range, and I think this is better suited for what he wants to do. Because right there, back air, he... Because the thing is, he wants to get in your face... But he doesn't want to be too close because that's how you explode against Meta Knight. But if you're in that mid range, in that burst range, you know, you could get something started. And just like you saw, you took that first stock pretty efficiently. This is a good spot for Pong. He's putting on the pressure with those jabs. That's the second time we've seen that, though. Yeah. Where um, he uh, just gets the roll behind in the middle of that fury of jabs. Yeah, you have to because you either wait for the jab to go out or you just roll through get the punish, so. That was fantastic up air, knowing that he couldn't retreat to ledge without invincibility. 
and we're seeing an entirely different breed of Pong right now. He hit him with second hit up air twice. So like, you can't do anything about that. You aren't even gonna fall out of that one. Okay, up B. Okay. Forward throw, putting him off stage. Will he be able to complete Ooh. this F card? He did not want to snap to ledge. I know he didn't. The back air started to come out and just snap back. All oh, right, you? that's unfortunate. Oh no, the numbers are red. <laughs> the numbers are red. Hong's at 0%. Uh, I don't think he's going to die at 0. He's going to die at like 12. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Cause... Oh, Ooh. he's not going to die at all. A beautiful air dodge read. And immediately Cassius going to whisper something in uh, 809's ear. He's probably just like, why did you air dodge, stupid? Oh. What? <laughs> You're like, yo, bro, stop, stop it. that. <laughs> <laughs> What is wrong? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, good stuff. I mean, good stuff by Pong. That was great adaptation. Um, definitely took his time with the punishes at ledge. Like uh, I was kind of, I was kind of trying to preach get the first two games, because and you know in that situation, like you have a character like Fox, you can make people slow, man. Just punishes will come to you. Not only that, but one thing that was really key was um, he wasn't edge guarded. I mean, he edge guarded himself at one point, but like for the most part, he wasn't. Like getting back air continuously off mm -hmm. the stage or getting neutral air and getting flown way out there. Game three, or game four rather. Um, okay, 809 has the double counter pick advantage, but like even if he loses this game, he can play the next game on counter pick. I know that he wants to end it here and now, and that's probably why he went to Smashville. Yeah, um, you know, an another stage where like you could, he could probably ladder people off the side. Uh, I mean, so let's see if you can get those. I, I really want to see a sideways a horizontal ladder. Don't, don't ask me why. I always well, think they're a liar. You might get the chance. <laughs> <laughs> now, these guys are really playing sort of more blow for blow than we've seen before. Yeah. Wow, he did. <laughs> he mashed out of that one forward air. Like, that's, that's hilarious. Wow, he's mashing. Okay. <laughs> I, <laughs> he's trying to hit him with something. <laughs> that's the, like the what the fourth dash attack oh tries and to catch him again on the platform oh my god he's he's very fortunate that 809 didn't catch that because that was horrendous he, he sdi'd into the platform while he was getting up air by meta knight like you just, just want to die <laughs> yeah so i'm honestly really liking this play from pong right now wow He's like, obviously, like he is pushing buttons. I feel like he's just like, oh, I'm an no. aggressive player naturally. Oh, no. that down there was. Yeah, no, he, he's definitely an aggressive player naturally. And Honestly, I feel like he is playing a little bit more patient. He's like playing in the middle. I feel like games one and two, he was too scared. Yeah. He was too aware of the fact that like, you know, of what 809 could do to him. And I was like, yeah, you can do stuff to me, but I'm not going to forget about the stuff I can do to you. Oh yeah, no, definitely. He's he's definitely playing with much more confidence and with a game plan. Like like you said, you need to come to, come with a game plan when you play against Fox. Very <gasps> important. Cool. The double air dodge there, very scary. <laughs> that back air might do it actually. It does. And now we have a ton of rage on 809. Pong needs to delete this stock really quickly, yeah. or else we might see those legendary sideways ladders. I didn't see one today. I want to see one. Sorry. <laughs> oh, we had one. We had one on uh, Paul. Oh yeah, we did. Oh yeah. man. I missed it. Yeah, but we had. <laughs> yeah, okay. you can watch it in the thoughts at House of 3000. Oh my god, okay, the numbers are red. The numbers are red. Oh! Uh, that was an untechable spin, but I guess at the very end of it, he was able to tech that. <gasps> that should be the end of him. Yep. Yeah. Great job. Knowing that he wanted to go to ledge doesn't let him. Intercepts with an up smash. Yeah, I feel like 809 thought he was going to get it, and he was at like really high percent anyway. You feel like maybe he had stuff to play with. Ooh. Yeah, that jab on. Let's not forget, this is Pong's tournament stock here. This might be it for him in the tournament. <gasps> a really lucky miss on that. He's not able to get a punish, but at the very least, he's still alive. Wow, and he, the ambiguous landing after the tornado. 809 did not get punished at all. <gasps> oh, he did. Oh, ooh, I was, you died? Yes, no, but he did not die. Every okay. little hit right now from 809 could just mean the end of Pong's run here. Let's, I mean, let's see if Pong can get something started because he had definitely had, he had stints where he got, he hit 809 once and got him to like 80% really fast. Let's see what he could do. He's getting these techs. The techs are so important. Spacing outside of the moves. He is, ooh, I'm not sure if those are intentional. Maybe they're misinputs, but. Okay, okay. get that back air. Okay, got the back air. Let's get something started. Ooh, that. 
Is that it? It yeah. is. He dies off the side. No wow. DI at all could save him from that. Yeah. And we have 809 taking it 3 1. The grand champion of Xeno Quarter 2 Arcadian 2018. Yeah, I mean, shout outs to Pong. Pong was pl he was playing really well. Oh, absolutely. Um, that, that was a really good grand finals. Was, shout outs to Pong. And um, congratulations. You're definitely banned from the next Xeno Arcadian. So. <laughs> hey. That's what.